90% of engine modifications are garbage. But I've handpicked the 13 engine mods that are actually worth it, and every one of them has been dyno tested, track proven, or punished in brutal daily driving. Stick around because in the end, I'll reveal the 5 mods you should avoid at all cost. Let's get to it. Mod number 13, High Flow Air Filter. First time I saw someone swap a stock air filter for a high flow one, I laughed. Thought it was a gimmick. But then I drove the damn car. Throttle felt snappier. Idle was smoother. Even MPG ticked up just a bit. I shut my mouth real quick. A high flow air filter lets your engine breathe the way it wants to breathe. Stock filters are fine if you're just grocery getting. But if you give a damn about performance or long-term reliability, upgrade it. You can put these on trucks, tuners, old muscle, daily beaters, you name it. K&N, A-E-M, S&B, proven brands that don't fall apart like the cheap crap online. And yeah, they cost more up front, but they're washable and reusable. One good one can outlast 10 paper filters, pays for itself. Big mistake folks make? Slapping it in and calling it a cold air intake. It's not. And don't go soaking it in oil like you're basting a turkey. Too much oil can foul up your MAF sensor. It's a simple mod, takes minutes. But it lays the foundation for every other upgrade. Better air in, better performance out. But if you think breathing in better air matters, wait till we start cooling it down. Mod number 12, cold air intake. This one's tricky. Cold air intakes get hyped to hell. Every 19-year-old with a socket set thinks slapping on a shiny pipe makes them a race car engineer. Most of them, just sucking in hot engine bay air and losing power. But a properly designed cold air intake, placed outside the heat zone, sealed off, pulling fresh, dense air, that's a real upgrade. I know the guy who installed one on a 6th gen Camaro with a heat shield and fender well scoop, paired it with a tune, picked up 10 to 15 horsepower at the wheels. Not bad for bolt on and done right. Here's where folks screw it up. They buy a generic pipe off eBay, throw it on near the exhaust manifold, and wonder why the car feels sluggish. It ain't about looks, it's about air temperature. Cooler air packs more oxygen. More oxygen means better combustion. Simple science. And don't ignore your MAF sensor. Relocate it wrong, and your AFR goes haywire. Boom, and you're staring at check engine light. Stick with names like AEM, InGen, or Volant. They've tested their stuff. They didn't just bend pipes in a backyard and call it performance. We've now got cooler, denser air coming in, but what's the point of breathing better if your intake gets clogged with greasy carbon sludge? Next up, the mod that keeps your engine's lungs clean. Number 11, oil catch can. You ever pull an intake manifold off a direct injected engine at 40,000 miles? Looks like someone poured barbecue sauce in there. Thick, black, greasy carbon gunk choking everything up. That junk comes from crankcase blow-by, oil vapor getting recycled back into your intake, and modern emission systems, they make it even worse. That's where the oil catch can comes in. It's cheap, simple, and one of the best long-term mods you can do. It should be installed on every turbo build. Hell, even my daily car's got one. It catches oil mist before it ever hits your valves, keeps the intake clean, improves combustion, helps your engine breathe like it just got a lung transplant. I cracked open catch can on my GTI after 6,000 miles. Half a cup of nasty black soup. That would have gone straight into the intake valves. Not on my watch. But don't run a knockoff Amazon can with no baffles. That's just a soda can with fittings. You want proper filtration? Look at JLT, Mishimoto, or Radium and empty the damn thing. I've seen guys ignore it and end up with overflow in their intercooler. You just kept the engine's lungs clean. Now let's free up power you didn't even know you were wasting. Mod number 10, lightweight pulley kit. Most folks chase horsepower. They forget about freeing it up. That's where lightweight pulleys come in. Think of it like this. Your engine is spinning belts all day. Alternator, power steering, water pump, the heavier those pulleys are, the more energy your engine wastes just turning its own guts. Swap them for lightweight aluminum or underdrive pulleys and you've got less rotational drag. The engine revs quicker, feels snappier, not more horsepower but more usable power. I put a full set on an old 350Z, felt like I shaved 200 pounds off the crank. Throttle picked up faster, downshifts hit harder, no ECU tune needed. But here's where people mess up. They go too light on the crank pulley and throw off the harmonic balance. That can wreck your bearings or even snap a crankshaft over time. This ain't a lawnmower. It's an engine. Balance matters. Stick with reputable brands like Unorthodox Racing, Fluid Amper, or ATI. And for daily drivers, I skip the underdrive on alternators. Dimming headlights at idle ain't worth the gain. This is one of those sneaky mods. You don't notice it on paper, but the feel behind the wheel? Huge. But now that we've freed up rotation, let's ignite that power with a stronger spark. Mod number 9. Upgraded spark plugs and ignition coils. You can have all the air and fuel in the world, but if your spark's weak, you're dead in the water. Upgrading your spark plugs and ignition coils is one of the most overlooked performance mods out there. But let me tell you, it makes a difference. Cleaner burn, stronger ignition, more efficient combustion, and on tuned engines, it's mandatory. I did a coil and plug swap on a modded GTI that was misfiring at high RPMs. 
threw in NGK Iridium plugs and R8 coils. Misfire's gone, throttle sharpened. Idle smoothed out, felt like a new car. Now don't get cute with plug heat ranges. If you're boosted, you go one or two steps colder. If you're stock, stay with OEM spec or go Iridium for longevity. And don't mismatch junk coils from five different eBay sellers. You'll chase ghost codes for weeks. I've had customers do that. Wasted time, fried the ECU trying to troubleshoot. Use trusted stuff. NGK, Denso, MSD, Delphi. It's not just about power, it's, it's reliability. You get stronger spark, better cold starts, and even a tiny MPG bump. Now, it's time to reprogram the brain that controls it all. Mod number eight, ECU remap. Your engine's capable of a hell of a lot more than the factory tune allows. But the stock ECU, it's playing it safe. Fuel economy, emissions, smooth drivability for your grandma. You want real performance? You tune it. An ECU remap done right wakes the engine up like a shot of adrenaline. Sharper throttle, more torque, better timing, optimized fuel curves. I've tuned bone stock engines that felt like a whole new machine afterward, but here's the trap. Don't use garbage tunes from forums or cheap flash tools. I had a guy come in once with a bricked ECU, tried to tune it himself with some $40 USB dongle. His car ran like trash, knocked like hell, burnt the valves, nearly torched the engine. Use legit platforms like HP tuners, great for GM, Ford, and Dodge, COBB access port, perfect for Subarus, Mazdas, and Fords. Plug and play with Dino Ready Maps, Honda, made for Hondas and Acuras, super precise and highly tunable. These aren't just fancy names, they're proven tools that real tuners rely on. And speaking of pros, get it tuned by someone who knows their way around a dyno. This isn't a video game. You're rewriting the brain of a car. Treat it with respect. But now that you're pushing harder, it's time to let that exhaust flow. Like it means business. Mod number seven, performance exhaust system. Ever tried driving with a clogged tailpipe? That's what your engine's dealing with on a stock exhaust. Restricted flow, heat buildup, and wasted power. A performance exhaust system sets it free. You get better flow, less back pressure, and if you do it right, real horsepower. I've installed full exhausts on Camaros, WRXs, even old Civics. Every time, the motor breathes easier. Pair it with a tune, and now you're talking. Torque curve smooths out. Throttle response sharpens. And the sound? Deep, controlled, no fart cans here. But don't just bolt on the loudest thing you can find. That's rookie stuff. Too big a pipe, and you kill your low end. No scavenging, no velocity, just noise. Stick with mandrel bent tubing. Stainless steel if you've got the coin. Don't cheap out on welds. I've seen slip fit junk rattle apart in a week. And leave your resonators intact unless you want cabin drone drumming in your skull every highway mile. This isn't about being loud, it's about being efficient. Clean out the junk. Let that engine exhale with purpose. Now that she's breathing easy and tuned to perfection, let's talk about real mechanical power. The kind that starts with the heart of your engine. Mod number six, performance camshaft. This one's for the folks running naturally aspirated setups who want real mechanical power not just bolt-on fluff. A performance camshaft is the heartbeat of your engine. It controls when your valves open, how long they stay open, and how much air and fuel get in and out. Done right, you get more top-end power, stronger mid-range, and a wicked exhaust note that lets people know you don't play. Even a mild cam upgrade when paired with match springs, push rods, and lifters can unlock 30 to 40 extra horsepower in the right setup. Throttle response sharpens, rev range widens, and the engine finally breathes like it came alive. But here's where rookies screw up. They slap in a big cam without checking the rest of the valve train. Wrong valve springs, bent push rods, too much lift, piston meets valve, game over. And don't even think about a cam swap without a tune. Your ECU won't know what hit it. Your idle will hunt like a lost hound. Brands like Comp Cams, Brian Tooley Racing, and Texas Speed offer excellent grinds tailored to different builds and goals. Just remember, NA builds shine when the cam is balanced with the rest of the system. Now that the cam's got your valves dancing, let's make sure your engine doesn't overheat from all that extra movement. Mod number five, aluminum radiator upgrade. Let me tell you what kills more engines than bad tunes and redline revving combined, heat. I've seen head gaskets pop like popcorn because some guy thought his stock plastic radiator was fine, fine, until it cracked in a summer traffic jam and cooked the motor. An aluminum radiator isn't just about cooling, it's about protection. You get more core rows, better coolant flow, superior heat dissipation, whether you're boosted, cammed, or just drive hard, this is a mod that'll literally save your engine's life. I slapped a Mishimoto unit into a customer's Turbo Civic. Car used to run 215 degrees Fahrenheit on a hard pull. After the swap, 185 degrees Fahrenheit all day, even in gridlock. No more heat soak, no more limp mode. But don't stop at just the radiator. Replace those old rubber hoses. Check your thermostat. Make sure your fan's doing its job. Cooling is a system, not a single part swap. And bleed it right. Don't leave air pockets. 
I've seen a guy grenade a freshly built engine because he didn't burp the coolant. You've cooled your car down and bought yourself some serious insurance, but now, let's chill the most critical part of any turbo build, the air going in. Mod number four, performance intercooler for turbo engines. You can have the biggest turbo in the world, but if your intake air is hot, your power's a joke. That's where a performance intercooler comes in. It cools down the compressed air before it hits the combustion chamber. Cooler air equals denser air. Denser air equals more oxygen. And more oxygen, that means more power. The stock intercooler on most turbo cars, it's built for emissions and economy, not power. It heat soaks fast, especially after a few hard pulls or in warm weather. Once that happens, your ECU pulls timing, the knock sensor panics, and your engine feels like it's dragging a trailer uphill. Now swap in a larger front mount or upgraded top mount intercooler, and the difference is night and day. You'll get lower intake temps, more consistent power, and no heat soak tantrums. Go with proven brands, Mishimoto, Wagner Tuning, ETS, Garrett. Pay attention to core size, bar and plate design, and pressure drop ratings. And make sure it fits your setup without blocking airflow to the radiator. This mod doesn't just add power, it protects your engine from detonation and keeps things consistent. Now that we've cooled the charge, it's time to take control of the pressure itself. Mod number three, turbo timer and boost controller. Boost is beautiful, but it's also dangerous if you don't respect it. Let's start with the turbo timer. I don't care if you're running stock PSI or pushing big numbers. If you shut the engine off right after a hard pull, that turbo is sitting there red hot with oil baking inside the bearings. Congratulations, you just cut its lifespan in half. A turbo timer lets the engine idle for a minute or two after shutdown, keeps oil flowing, lets the turbo cool down properly. I've had turbos last over 120,000 miles just because the timer did its job. Now the boost controller, a row, manual or electronic, is how you command the pressure. Stock boost levels are fine for warranty safe driving, but when you want more grunt and your tune can handle it, a good controller lets you dial it in without spiking or surging. I like TurboSmart for manual setups. For electronic, HKS or AEM, reliable, repeatable and built to handle abuse. But let me be clear, don't crank the dial unless the engine's built for it. I've seen pistons turned into ashtrays from overboosting on stock internals. Don't be that guy. Next up, the upgraded fuel system that protects your engine when it matters most. Mod number two, upgraded fuel injectors and pump. You ever see a car lean out under full throttle? It's not pretty. One second it's pulling hard, next second boom, pull in the piston, engine's done. Why? Not enough fuel. When you start tuning, boosting, camming, whatever, you better make damn sure your fuel system can keep up. That means bigger injectors and a higher flow pump. Fuel is your safety net. Run lean and you're playing with fire. But don't just slap in giant injectors for future plans. Too big and your idle goes to crap. Your AFRs are impossible to dial in. Your tuner will hate you. Match the size to your build and goals. Precision matters. Use quality brands, Injector Dynamics, Detchworks, AEM, Bosch, and always retune after fuel upgrades. Don't assume it'll figure itself out. It won't. You've got the air, you've got the spark. Now your fuel's up to the task, but all that hot, compressed air? It's time to go beyond bolt-ons and unlock real, explosive power. Next, the king of engine mods, number one, forced induction. If you're serious about power, nothing, and I mean nothing, delivers like forced induction. A turbocharger or supercharger kit transforms your engine from a spirited runner into a full-on beast. Naturally aspirated engines rely on atmospheric pressure to breathe, but slap on a turbo or supercharger, and you're cramming more air and more fuel into the cylinders. That means explosive combustion. That means serious horsepower. Gains of 40% to 100% or more aren't uncommon with the right setup and tune. Turbos are more efficient, make insane power once they spool, but they can have lag. Superchargers offer instant throttle response, a linear power band, but they draw power to make power. Both have their pros. Both will make you grin like a kid on Christmas morning. But don't just bolt one on and pray. You'll need supporting mods. Upgraded fuel system, intercooler, ECU tune, and stronger internals if you're really pushing it. And most importantly, a trustworthy tuner. This is not a budget bolt-on. It's an investment. But if you want the most bang for your buck, forced induction is the ultimate mod. Just be ready, because once you boost, you'll never want to go back. Now, for the moment you've been waiting for, let's talk about five mods I would never recommend. These aren't just useless. They can cost you your build. Let's break them down. Starting with the one that pretends to be performance, but is really just plastic and lies. Number one, electric superchargers, eBay gimmicks. These are pure trash. A glorified hairdryer shoved into your intake won't give you boost. It'll give you check engine lights. They mess with your air fuel ratio, confuse your MAF sensor, and in the worst cases, trigger engine codes or stall the car. If it's under $150 and claims to add horsepower with fan blades, run the other way. 
Number two, noisy blow-off valves and fake turbo whistles. Want performance? Skip the sound show. These loud blow-off valves and turbo whistles add zero horsepower. They just scream, I watch too much Fast and Furious. They can also mess with your boost control or throw off airflow sensors if poorly installed. If all you want is noise, go buy a whistle and blow it out the window. Number three, Octane Booster Snake Oils. Dumping a bottle of mystery juice into your tank isn't a mod, it's wishful thinking. Most of these Octane Boosters raise your rating by half a point, if that. And modern ECUs? They won't even react unless the change is significant. It's marketing hype in a can. Just buy higher octane fuel from the pump if you need it. Number four, mismatch parts without a tune. Here's a hard truth. Every mod you do changes how your engine breathes, fuels, or burns. Add the wrong intake, oversized injectors, or random sensors without tuning, and your engine won't know how to adapt. You'll get stalling, detonation, bad AFRs, or worse, catastrophic failure. Every part needs to work in harmony, and the ECU needs to know about it. Number five, Budget turbo kits without supporting mods. This one is the number one rookie mistake I've seen destroy builds. Some guy buys a $900 turbo kit, thinking he's getting 400 horsepower for cheap. No tune, no fuel upgrades, no intercooler, just bolted on boost in blind faith. What happens? Melted turbo, warped pistons, blown head gasket. One guy I knew shelled out $6,300 to fix the carnage, and the car never ran the same again. If you can't afford to boost properly, don't do it. And that's all for today. But before you go, here's an important reminder. Always check your state and federal laws before doing any mods, because what works on the dyno might get you pulled over on the street. Some upgrades could land you a fine or worse. Now, if you're curious which mods walk that line between power and punishment, tap the video on screen to see nine illegal car mod and why you should avoid it.